later because they're not watching it right now. Um, but hello, in a couple hours it'll be real, okay, or a few hours I should say. Um, we had a, a Wi-Fi attack last night, uh, electricity, lightning, boom. So it's, uh, it's really kind of an attack, it is, because we've got people all over the world that watch us. We've got one family in Alabama that meets and they meet at somebody's home every week and they um, they go to to different homes and they have church um, and this is their church and so uh, this morning um, I had to text them and let them know that they would not be you know we would not be showing it live but um, that it would be later on Facebook okay so you might do something with that because that's a real glare right there Stephen so maybe you can turn that that off um, so hallelujah we are going to have church we're already having church praise the Lord so to those that will be watching we bless you you're you're right on time we're right on time hallelujah would you say this with me I say that Immokalee is in revival this region of Florida is in revival we're going to have what we say. We're going to have what we say. The, blind the blind see, the lame walk, the, lame walk. the deaf hear, the, hear. The, dumb the dumb speak, demoniacs are set free, free. maimed are made whole, are made whole. Elders, rise up elders rise up to their rightful position, their rightful position. Backsliders, come back. backsliders come back, they repent, they repent. We, go we go on with God, we say, we say. that we have you have, you have, I have, I have all, the all the monies necessary, necessary to, support to support this revival. It's not to make Pastor Bronk rich. It's not to have in big bank accounts or luxurious buildings. It's all about souls. We want souls in Jesus' name. And I say that the church mortgage is paid off in full. That debt is paid. Lord, I ask you to ask me what my part is in paying this off. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord what he'd have you to give this morning. Um, if you will, Alex. We want to uh, acknowledge, um, of course, you know that we are partnering with, maybe partnering is not even a good word, it's more than that, it's family, with the tribe of Judah. We're married, uh, we're family, all of the above. Uh, Rex and Marcia are, uh, have been elders in this church for many, many years, and uh, when they go out and serve, um, in their ministry they're serving with our prayers and our blessings and so they were ministering Wednesday night and you know we took the time at the beginning of the service to uh, pray for them and one of the national uh, the national chaplain for uh, the the outlaws uh, motorcycle club is here with us today uh, Lone Wolf would you please stand We appreciate you being here. God bless you. Thank you. And thank you for serving the kingdom. Hallelujah. We appreciate that. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give this morning? We'll give you an opportunity. We've got a real, you know, normally our services have very little other stuff going on, but sometimes other stuff is good. We've got a baby dedication this morning. We've got a couple of graduations. And then hopefully we'll get a little word in there before it's all over with. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm already edified. Hallelujah. Can I show you why you want to stick around and not go anyplace? Can I? Is this unbelievable? <laughs> My God. <laughs> and that right there should tell you we're going to have revival. Because Alex had something to do with it and it still turned out beautiful. I mean, that, see, God, God can do anything. He can do absolutely anything, anything. 
Hallelujah. Um, so don't go anywhere, kids. You can stay in for the, the baby dedication, and then Miss Mavis will have you next door after this. But right now, let's all stand. And if you have a gift, bring it forward, and then you can return to your seat. Bless you, Lord. Well, Father, we just bless this time of giving. We thank you. We bless everyone in the name of Jesus. Those that are going to be watching and sending by PayPal or through another a donation process. We thank you for it. We bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Alexa knows that she's in the green room and she's ready to thank you guys. I appreciate it. She's in the green room. That's the room ju you just before you step out on stage. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's like, give me the mic. All right. I want to share for just a few moments because baby dedication is uh, that we do around here. It's not your typical baby dedication. In a few moments, we're going to have uh, the parents come forward, and we're going to have a, a few more that are going to be standing along with them. But I'm going to read you some scripture because it's vitally important because it is part of things that we do, but the concept and the reality of it is far more than just, oh, that's a, that's a beautiful baby, and that was really nice that, you know, that... Uh, Alex and Natalie got a chance to, to dedicate their baby. I want to share some scripture. You're not going to have to turn there. We can do that a little bit later in the, in the service with some ministry that's going to go on. But um, baby dedication is a sanctified tradition. It's a sanctified tradition. Sanctified primarily, I'll say this, by the Old Testament. And I'm going to give you some examples and read some scripture Real quickly, first of all, Moses' parents in Exodus 2, 1 and 2 says, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife of the daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. We can't go into the story of Moses, but we know that this was really one of those Old Testament examples of a parent's seeing God's destiny in a child and saying, I don't care what the edict is, the command of the king, I'm going to raise my, or I'm going to have my child preserved against the future. That was one godly example. The other one was Samson's parents in Judges 13, 2. There was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and enter not any unclean, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, Thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be as a uh, Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Again, an example was God sanctified Samson from the very beginning and gave specific instructions to his parents because his parents had everything to do with how that child was to be raised, everything. The next one was Hannah, and that was Samuel, the great prophet Samuel. Samuel wrote much of the Bible and was the prophet to, to David and to Saul and to, uh, it was one of the strongest prophets of the Old Testament. 1 Samuel 1 says this, verse 10, and she, this is speaking of his mother, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of, my, of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. This is the same commitment that she made that was supposed to be made by Samson's parents, although they lived decades and many maybe centuries apart. But here Hannah said, Lord, if you will give me a child, I'll dedicate him back to you and he'll serve you. And I promise whatever you tell me to do or not to do concerning him, that I'll do. Now, the other one is in the New Testament. But I will say this, 
most all tradition that we have concerning child dedication is in the Old Testament. Jesus himself was dedicated by Mary and Joseph, Luke 2, 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now here's Jesus present at the temple. 2.22 says this, Luke 2.22, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses was accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord. Notice here that every example, every example, even Mary and, and Joseph, of course, every example were of parents that were told what to do, and they themselves agreed to it, and they promised, basically, that they would do what the Lord was asking. That was, that was the typification of them dedicating their child to the Lord. Now, here's some observations before, before we bring her out of the green room, okay? Public dedication, like this is a tradition, okay? Um, public dedication in front of a group is a commitment by the parents, okay? The child has nothing to do with it. It's a commitment that we're witnessing by the parents. A preacher cannot sanctify, he can only administer the testimony. In other words, what I do today doesn't sanctify what they're doing. It only is I'm just administering it, and you're witnessing it. I'm witnessing it, you're witnessing, and I'm administering it because I'm giving you scriptural example to say, okay, this is a tradition, but nevertheless, it's a sanctified tradition. Baby dedication is a tradition. It's not a commandment. And that's important for a lot of you that's never had your child dedicated. You won't find in the New Testament that Jesus or the apostles ever commanded children to be dedicated. You do find this tradition that we can cherish and we can say, this is wonderful because what we get to do is celebrate a commitment that Natalie and Alex have in raising their child. But it's important for us to understand, just like water baptism, communion is an instruction. We're supposed to do communion. Water baptism is a commandment. We're supposed to do water baptism. We don't have a commandment that says, thou shalt sanctify all your children through, in other words, for those that have never been, but you've received Jesus Christ, you're on your way to heaven. Hallelujah. You understand that. But public acknowledgement of dedication is always on the part of the parent. And the parent has to publicly say, I will serve God all the days of my life and live a godly life so that what I'm doing is witnessed and administered by a minister in that fashion. Has everybody got that? Baby dedication is a testimony to the church and the world that the parents are dedicating the child through a sanctified life. Just a little bit more, Alyssa. Alexa, I'm in. It is a commitment to live a godly life based on the parents. It's a commitment to keep the home. I said that to them this morning. I had not had a chance to talk to them. I brought them in. I said, I know you, but I'm telling you, this is what I'm going to say to you. Do you commit to live a godly life? Yes. Do you commit to live God in your home? In other words, you will never, ever let unsanctified stuff in your home in front of your daughter. Yes. Are you committing to... to the church and to God that you will raise this child in the house of God. Yes, we will do these things. So that was not a commitment to me. It's a commitment to God before us. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Timothy is another example. Second Timothy 1 5 says Paul was talking to Timothy and he says, when I call to remember it's the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first, uh, which dwelt first in thy grand grandmother Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, I'm persuaded that is in thee also. So it's an implication here is that even from a child, his mother and his grandmother, we don't have anything to do. We don't have any, any word on what his father or grandfather had any place in sanctifying Timothy's life. But 
sanctifying parents. Uh, this is one other scripture, and maybe the last. Maybe we've got one more here. 1 Corinthians seven fourteen says, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they're holy. What this is saying is, he, in this scripture, leading up to it, Paul was saying, look, just because you uh, get saved and your husband or wife is not saved, don't divorce them. You, that's not a reason. You're, you can live with and be sanctified. You can have a sanctified marriage uh, with an unbeliever as long as they, we won't go into all that teaching, as long as they will remain in a position where they sanctify the home. And he said the children are sanctified. In other words, not that they're saved, but that they become under the umbrella by the believing wife or the believing husband. In other words, if she sits and, and she stands before the church and says, I, I promise to serve God, follow God, bring my child to church, that is a dedication in itself. Um, so the other thing, too, as I said this, grandparents and concern when parents do not qualify for a public testimony. Jesus said this, or, or this happened in his ministry, and he said this in, in Matthew 19, 13. Then there were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, well, this morning we're going to celebrate. Now, here's, here's a, a couple more observations. We understand this. We understand that this moment in time that we're celebrating with Natalie and Alex is this doesn't, this doesn't save a child. In other words, a child doesn't become born again at this moment in time. At a later point in life, they have to receive Jesus. But their testimony to her, see, the main thing is not what happens here. This starts it, and it's a public testimony, and we celebrate. It's like a marriage. We're celebrating like two, a couple come, and they commit themselves. It's their commitment to each other before God that makes them a married couple. That's what makes them. That's why they, have, they can legally go home and do stuff. Okay, it's their commitment to each other before God. It's their commitment before God in the witnesses here that says we will serve you. That's, and, it, and, and what really makes a difference is the way they'll live their life for the next 20 years. That's really what will make the difference. So with all that said, you guys come on. And anybody that you wanted to have stand with you, please. And Candy, please, if you'll come. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mommy, if you do a better job with her than he does, would you please? She wants food. Well, hallelujah, don't we all? Okay, we're going to all leave here in a little bit and get some. Hallelujah. Um, you guys, can you see him in the camera? You want him over this way a little bit? You got him? Okay, great. Okay. Now, would you all please stand with us? See, okay, she's looking at her mama like, I like her a lot more than I like you, okay. And so this morning we have others that are standing as godparents and the overseers. And You want to introduce this is the Godfather of the Godfather. The God, I've been looking for him for a long time. Okay. 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 And the name? And yes. Class. 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 Okay. And? Wonderful. Okay. All right. And so you guys know, as well as all you guys know, is that she's going to be raised among us. And you're making a commitment by your standing. Oh, I didn't tell you before you stood. You're making commitment that you are going to live a godly life in front of her, okay? She's not going to drive by and see you coming out of a bar one day, okay? Hallelujah. If that's you, sit down or leave. No, okay. Okay. So we're going to lay hands on her. We're going to dedicate her before the Lord. She has her own, her own, the, they saw it this morning, her own embossed Alexa Bible this morning. She's going out of here 
armed and dangerous, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Would you gather around her, please? And stretch your faith this way. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this gift from God. We thank you in Jesus' name that we lift her up and we commit her to follow you all the days of her life. We pray that she will grow in this house, be born again at a very early age, and fill with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, to this mother and father, thank you for the gift of life that you've given them. And Father, for their commitment. Now we dedicate her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> now this, Candy, why don't you show this to everybody? Okay. Well, they can't see it, but this is Alexa, uh, her baby dedication. And this is not the Lamb's Book of Life, but it's the closest the thing possible. Okay? Okay. Let's give him a great big hand. All right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate it. Here you go, Mama. Him. And that is Nathaniel Betancourt, and we're going to ask him to come and his parents to come with him. Uh, if they can come now, please. Yes. I didn't ask Nathaniel to uh, wear his cap and gown because he'd be the only one. And, you know, he's, he's a pretty cool dude, and I didn't want to embarrass him or anything like that. So... Hallelujah. If you guys will come, and Candy, if you'll assist me again, please. I'm going to work you out today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, yeah, that's good. And I'll have Homer. This is Nathaniel. And he grew up in our church. And his dad and mom have served with us in the ministry and served here in the ministry as elders for years. And... Uh, when we first started coming down here, was he even, he wasn't even around. Okay. So that tells you how long we've been here. Hallelujah. And uh, so I think there was just Jalissa and, and, and Priscilla. Yeah. And so this handsome guy has grown up in our church. Um, would you turn around and I just want to, uh, I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. But um, I just want to just say, I'm going to. We're going to give you a, a card here in just a moment. But um, I want to pray for you, and I want all of us to, to, to pray for Nathaniel. A smart guy, of course, you can tell he's handsome. I'm, I'm probably embarrassing him. Um, very talented in athletics, and uh, God has blessed him. He's got a, a scholarship or partial scholarship to our local Ave Maria University to play baseball. Real proud of him. Um, but I just want to pray for you. And uh, so, yeah, if you'll come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I heard the Lord say that there were things in the natural in this past year that were stolen from you. But the word that he would give you is a word that you should familiarize yourself with and cherish. called recompense the word is recompense and it just simply means that the Lord will pay you back whatever has been stolen your love your forgiveness your attitude is important to continue in these things God will exalt you God will keep his hand upon you if you continue to stay humble and allow his hand to be a witness on you, 
He will exalt you in the days ahead. Lord, in Jesus' name, Your grace. Bless him. Exalt him according to your love and your wisdom. Let your recompense be in his life. Your grace. Your glory. Your blessings. Hallelujah. Does dad, you guys, I, I think you guys know this guy, don't you? <laughs> maybe you're familiar with him. He grew up in your youth group, and uh, maybe you've met him at home or something. Yeah. Did you want to say anything this morning? Hey, they're going to, did I turn? It's, The light must be battery dead. We'll get another one. We got plenty of mics up here. Here we go. Test. Testing. Yep. Amen. That was a wonderful prayer by Pastor. Um, since the Lord has has given me an open door policy to go to him with anything. I've given my kids an open door policy. No matter what you go through in life, come see me, I'm your dad. I don't care what you've done, said, come see me, I'm your dad. And he has been, all my kids have been easy to raise. I've never had to worry about them wanting to go out till one or two in the morning partying. I've never had that problem, never, with none of them. With Elijah, with Julie, with Nathaniel, I said, Nathaniel, go out, son. My God, go do something. You can't be home all the time on Saturday. None of them have ever had a pattern of going out and partying. They've just, they never have. It's been, it's a testimony to Jesus. And they never have. I've never had to worry about them coming home at 2 o'clock in the morning drunk. Um, and, I, and, I, and they've been easy to raise, all three of them. But I want to say this. Um, You know, these, these years have gone by fast. Fast. I haven't seen him play any sports. But I'll say this. I know he had, uh, and I'll be quick, about two or three minutes. And uh, he had big dreams his senior year. He said, Dad, I know I can lead our team to a state title. I know I can. But that didn't happen. We'll kick that to the side. And then he had big dreams going into baseball season this year. Big dreams, you know, he had goals and numbers that he had set for himself. And that didn't happen. It, it, it was a real rough baseball year for him. Our team was very non-productive, we'll, we'll just say that. They weren't very productive, so he was forced to play all over the place. And he would get discouraged because his senior year wasn't, turned out to be what we thought. And he just, he was struggling, just struggling against, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the spiritual out of this analogy in a little bit. He was struggling, you know, against pitchers that he could dominate. He's just struggling for most of the year, discouraged. The ball wasn't dropping. He would hit everywhere, and it just he couldn't get a base hit. I said, son, it's okay. It's okay, man. You know, we had college dreams, you know, college offers. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. It just keep swinging. Keep practicing. Nothing. Ten games, 12 games, very few base hits, struggling. I said, it's okay. Keep swinging. Keep swinging, keep swinging. Keep, I said, son, go out and have some fun. And so him and his brother, his big brother, went out and they would go hit at the ballpark. They would have home run derby. And he started hitting home runs and, and practice, just knocking them out. He started having fun. He started building his confidence. I said, here we go. It's about to happen. So the last seven games of the year, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some spiritual out of this. I said, just keep swinging, son. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Keep having fun. Keep swinging the bat. It's going to happen. I think his average was, batting average was at 200 through most of the year. And I said, just keep swinging, man. Keep swinging. Don't worry about it. Seven games left in the season, he began to have fun. 
And if any of you know anything about baseball, the last seven games we played some tough competition, tough Naples. Uh, we played Laley, Palmetto Ridge. We played uh, St. John Newman. And the last part of the year, I'm saying all this to say something spiritual. He came out of the slump. If you know anything about baseball, in the last seven games he batted 7.33. He led the area. He just he was on a tear. He ended his last his last at bat in high school with a base hit. And I tell you this, son, you kept fighting, you kept swinging, you got some college offers, you decided to stay home. I'll tell you this, son, in your walk with Christ, there's gonna be times where you don't even feel safe. <laughs> there'll be times where there's an emotional battle in your mind. There'll be temptations, there'll be days that you won't wanna pray, there'll be days that you won't wanna read, but you gotta keep swinging, son. You got right. to keep swinging. That's right. No matter what you face, you got to keep swinging. I have always told you, never let anybody outwork you. There'll be times, baby, when you'll fail in your walk with Christ. Hopefully not, but you got to keep swinging. You got That's to right. open up that Bible. That's right. You got to keep coming to church. You got to keep come here and Pastor Bronk, and you got to keep swinging the bat. If you keep swinging the bat, great things, great yes. things will happen, son. That's right. Great things. You went from batting 200 to 733 in the last seven games. You opened up and you played to your potential. You'll never reach your potential in Christ as you keep swinging. You yeah. got to open up that Bible. You got to pray in the spirit. You got to serve Jesus. Because at the end of the day, son, it's not about how many touchdowns you throw or base hits you hit. It's about how much you love the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all that matters. Nothing else does at the end of the day. Nothing else matters but your love. For God Almighty, and I thank God that he was raised in this church. I thank God he was raised under Pastor Bronk in this ministry. Pastor Bronk has been my football buddy, you know. He's been there almost every game. There's only one time in my life that I wanted to punch Pastor Bronk. <laughs> That's at Naples. <laughs> had a football game on him, he remembers. He hugged me. Nathaniel had a real good game, he hugged me. He said, I wish you could see him play tonight. And I said, well, so do I, Pastor Bronk. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for the reminder. So do I. Thank you. But Pastor Bronk has been a good example to him, to me, a good friend, a real good friend, probably the closest friend that I have that I never hang around with. Go figure that yeah. one out. He's the best friend that you have that you never hang around with. But we all have our lives. We all have our ministries. And, but um, thank you, Pastor Bronk, for being there and Miss Candy. You've been a good example to me, a good example to my son, and I know you've always been, along with Corey, one of his biggest fans. <laughs> oh, God bless you. We love you. Praise God. Uh, Y'all don't leave for just, just a second. Stand right there. Um, put that on the stage here, buddy. Uh, we have one more card to give, a graduation card, and that is, we're going to give it to you guys today. And, and uh, they also, they have another graduate out of their home, and that is Jalissa. And she's working, so I don't know when she'll be here. Uh, she usually works on a lot of Sundays, so we're going to go ahead and give her, give mom this card for Jalissa. Uh, we knew her; she was just a baby when we when we came here. Now she is precious. She is a wonderful lady. Now she was a, a little girl when I first met her. Uh, she's she serves the Lord. She's a good mother. Um, she's a hard worker. Um, I, I don't go to Lozano's every Sunday, but I'll probably be celebrating with a group today and I, I will not tell her what I want. She knows what her pastor wants. She knows what drink I want and she knows what meal I want and that I don't change it. I just go in there. Pastor, you having the same? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks. That's it. And she'll just bring it to me. And actually she may not even ask me. She may just bring it. That's probably <laughs> Julissa, uh, graduated with an AA degree yes, sir. With, from Southwest University? FSW. Okay. FSW. And, and that she's headed towards a nursing, okay, an RN degree. So we want to honor her. You let her know that we honored her. I'll tell her today, but you know, obviously. Um, she, when she was a little girl, <laughs> went with Candy and I and, and Davey, my youngest daughter, on a ministry trip to New York. We took her to Canada uh, after I got through ministering for several days at a church in New York, and we almost did not get her back across the, the American, into America. Uh, we, we did not have papers from them, which that was dumb on our part, and we had no medical records or anything. When the 
uh, American, C Canada just let us go through. When the American officer looked in there and there's this little Hispanic girl <laughs> with these white people, they're like, oh, wait a minute. Where's your papers? And we, I, I prom and Julie was so little and she was, she w he started talking to her and she got scared and she wouldn't say anything. And I was like, Julie, talk, talk. And he told me, he goes, you need to hush. You don't need to say anything. I was like, yes, sir. Because, I mean, a man's got a big old gun on his hip, and he's telling, you know, and he's, so I'm saying, okay. I'm, I'm like, Julie, say the right things, my God. <laughs> like, all she would have had to done was say, these people are kidnapping me, and we'd be still in prison. <laughs> I was on the streets, was it the streets of New York when I put her? I was on the streets of New York City. I don't know, maybe Times Square. We, we, we would visit that two or three times when we'd go there. Uh, through the years and uh, Julie was walking down the street and there was a, it was so funny I don't know how it all came about but I've got a picture I don't know if we can still find it but we still joke about it she's just a little thing then and I picked her up and it was a clean it was clean on the inside basically I picked her up and put her in a trash can and and started to walk off and she's like standing she's just she's just laughing Julie you know she's just happy Julie and we took a picture of her and so I, I keep telling her Julie you know, today I'll see her and say, Julie, you know what? Maybe I should have left you in that trash can, but you turned out pretty good. So, hallelujah. God bless you. Let's pray over Julie right now. Okay, let's do that. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless Julie. We bless her and her offspring. We just pray that, Lord, you'll bless her all the days of her life. We thank you for this accomplishment. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thanks, guys. Okay, love you. Blessings and glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus. We love to magnify you. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Father. Would you just lift those hands up again about half mask and, or however you'd like and just magnify him with me. We love you, Jesus. We glorify you. We praise and exalt 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 you. Bella Caraso. Beda Balacro de le Mensaitia. Mola Caresse le Balocreste. Fedesetia. I say again and again and again to the intercessor. To male, to female, in me there is none. No difference. To the intercessor, to the one that will lift up and bring about this great outpouring. Do not cease to pray by day and do not cease to pray by night. It is through your authority on my word that I'm bringing this about, saith the Spirit of grace. That which has been will not always be. I'm bringing forth a work that in your days, had it been told to you in your younger days, you would have not believed, saith the Spirit of grace. For men will tremble in the parking lot. Women and men will give their lives before they enter the doors of this church to me, saith the Spirit of grace. Oppressions and depressions that have been upon them, every name that is named bipolar, manic, depressed, everything that it could possibly be named in the area of emotions, deeper into the, into the realms of the psyche, into the soul, into places where no human being could go, where no medicine or no formula of religion could touch their lives. Your prayers are making a difference, saith the Spirit of grace. Continue to pray. Continue to move. For I am moving my army into a position that there is an invasion by my army that is scheduled by my spirit, saith the Spirit of grace. And my heavenly army will be under the command of your prayers, saith the Spirit of the Lord. For I have an earthly army and I have a heavenly army and the two of these will be united together in the days ahead to bring about the last outpouring, saith the Spirit of grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, we patronize and we ought, awfully so. Acts, it was a good one. It's not the best one. Acts is not. Acts is not. It's a foundational. It's the start. But we are supposed to go past Acts into what he prophesied would be a glorious church in the end. Hallelujah. When you read through Corinthians, when Paul 
was the actual minister of Corinthians. He not only apostled them, he pastored them. He actually stayed there for a number of years. He, he, he talks about the gifts, and they were behind in no, no gifts and no calls and stuff. But you find out that they were babies. They were really thumbsuckers. They were really those that were immature because there was strife and envy and debate among them. And once you find out this is that the revival we're after is not a gifts revival. Now, we believe in gifts, and we want all the gifts working in us. But the revival we're after is like this. It's like a fine waiter that goes into wherever the home, the family, or we're here at church, and the waiter comes to your table and says, uh, yes, ma'am, here, here's what we have on the menu. Everything that you need. Everything that you need. It's not, see, Jesus did not wait on gifts. Wherever he went, he was not waiting on, okay, if the Father, t I, I, see a, I see a sickness there, if I... If it's sovereignly his will, if, if God, you never find, you never ever, you can search, search all four of them, read them tonight, you won't find where he prayed, God, is it your will? Should I go? Should I not go? Should I go over there and pray for that? They knew if Jesus was in the room, that person was going to get healed. That's not, what, that's a, a gifts is like as, as the Holy Spirit moves. That's a sovereign thing. That's wonderful. The, the revival we're after is the one that the prototype, our, our sovereign Lord and Savior, gave us. Is the empowerment is, I see the need, I'll just go ahead and go ahead and do it in Jesus' name. There's no discussion. Rise up and, be walk, and, and walk in the name of Jesus. Do I have to fast 40 days? No, do I believe in fasting? You know we teach on it all the time. But you don't say, oh, you know what, after I get off my fast, I'll go over there and raise them up. Right now in the name of Jesus. Get up right now. Insanity go right now. People are like, I'm so depressed. And I, listen, I don't want to mock that. I know people do, and I know they fear, and I know in Jesus' name, I know I've been up against it before in the past, but I'm telling you, the Bible says that the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Here's our call our call is not to get past depression. That's a weak Monday. Our call is to go in to, to if he sends you and, and, and he says, I want you to go in there. Now, I, as I said, we're, any, anything that we, we're, that we see, we're supposed to meet that need. But to go into the insane asylums, to go into places where people are absolutely, they've been there for 20 years, insane, and cast that thing out and bring them out of there. If you're like, I'm, t I'm just trying to keep my own sanity, that's not where we're, that's not our calling. We're, we're a, a million times behind, but, uh, ahead of that. We're called for revival. We're called for the outpouring. We're called to walk in his steps. Hallelujah. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Well, they may do voodoo on me. Listen, they may do, they may, may kill a chicken. They may do this. They may do, listen, if they kill the chicken and, and put the blood in your yard, if they leave the chicken, pluck it and cook it and bring it to me and we'll eat it together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And eventually we'll get them in here and we'll get them saved. Amen. That lady that received a prayer cloth from us a few weeks ago, she wrote back, she's a Buddhist. God will go into the homes of Buddhists. She's, she's really into New Age, and she's really into Buddhism. And she wrote, and she said, once I received the prayer cloth, something started happening in my body. And then she wrote back and said, my daughter-in-law has got breast cancer and is going to have a mastectomy. Would you please pray for her? That's evangelism. That's the life of God. You don't have to get them saved for, first. Isn't this amazing? The Holy Ghost. It has to be the finger of God. Isn't it amazing? The Holy Ghost, the Holy, everybody say Holy Ghost. Holy. The Holy Ghost will go into a demon-possessed person and heal their body even before they get born again. Isn't that amazing? Woo! Are we peddling something good or what? We're peddling something good. We got something good to offer. Uh, you heroin addict, dope smoker, fornicator, blah, blah, blah. Witchcraft, lover of Satan, are you suffering? Yes. Can I pray for you?
Don't worry about it running back up your arm and getting on you. Let the power run off of you onto them and heal them. Hallelujah. Who's in charge here? Glory be to God. My job, your job, is to invigorate and cross-reference each other. Listen, you're candles. I'm a candle. But there's a, there's a, big, there's a big fire tornado over us. And he's the Holy Spirit. We are to cross-pollinate, bring forth an impregnation in the spirit of an earnest. Listen, what causes revival is this, hunger. If you don't ever hunger, you'll never be filled. Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. God will flirt with you. He'll flirt with you a little bit and say, come over here. It's good over here. I've called you. I have a, I have a divine destiny, a call, call on your life. He'll flirt with you, but if you think that God's just going to come and overtake you, you've got another thing coming. You'll never, ever get close. Somebody said, well, I'd like to have a relationship with God like that person or like so-and-so or like Pastor Bronk. And I'm not the, I have not arrived, folks. I'm still growing. But somebody said, I'd like to have a, 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 a relationship. I'd like to know God like that with with power and, and, and with confidence. That, he seems like he's got, uh, listen, I'm not faking this. I'm not trying to fake the funk, okay? I'm not doing this for a show off. I believe that I will, with you, raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out devils, and fear nothing. Amen. And fear nothing. Amen. I'd like to have a relationship with him uh, like that. Good, I can tell you how to do it. Get, you have to pray. You have to seek him. You have to go to those places where your heart is so hungry that you say, God, I'll die if I do not have this. You don't get it by just saying, that'd be nice to have if it comes along. You have to go after it with all your heart. You have to go after it not just passively. You have to go after it with every single fiber of your being. And there's people in here that's going to go with me with every, th every single thing inside of you. Hallelujah. God will flirt with you. You know what a flirt is. Hey, good looking, what's cooking? And you can walk off and say, man, that felt good. That little touch in church, I cried today. I cried today. I really, I felt something wonderful. You know what that was for? So maybe tomorrow morning you'd get up 30 or 45 minutes earlier, go in and say, Jesus, is there more of what I felt yesterday? Jesus, cleanse my life. Wash me. I've been backslidden through my words and through my actions and everything in my life, but See, Paul said, be not entangled. Every man that warreth, every good soldier that warreth, does not entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a good soldier. Listen, I believe this. I believe as wonderful as you are and as wonderful as he thinks I am, we're all so more, much more entangled with this life I'm not talking about blatant sin. I'm talking about our affections. Our, our thoughts are so much more on what's happening in the world and what's happening in this and what's happening in that. He wants to bring our minds. Listen, this will not make you less a mother, less a businessman. It will only invigorate and enhance what you're doing. But I'm telling you, we're still so much more. Our affections before church, in church, after church, during the week, we're not thinking constantly Set your affections on things that are above. When the, I'll tell you this, if you can mark it down today, if you've got a diary or, if, diary or if you can just mark it down someplace and go back to it, when it does happen, you'll find this. You'll say, look, my God, the outpouring that has come, the way that it has affected my mind and those people that we talk, our talk, our speech, our thoughts are all the time on him. It's all the time on him. All we want to do is be in another service. Oh, listen, I have wore myself out. Homer has wore himself out trying to get people to come to church. Now, I understand there's people that live further away, and it's harder, and there's work schedules, and this, that, and the other. I'm telling you, but I'm telling you, listen, we will be in the days ahead. The camera can't follow me. If that's a side door, We'll be holding the doors back almost. Where his glory is at, they broke off roof tile and let people down because they could not get in. 
We just haven't seen. Listen, I didn't sign up for this and you haven't signed up for this. What is going on right now? I thank God with all my heart for the last 20 years. The last 20 years has brought us to this. But what has been is not what always going to be. We didn't sign up. This is not the kingdom. What we're seeing right now, we're seeing the righteousness. We're hearing the doctrine of the righteousness of the kingdom that you can live without sin. But listen, he hasn't called me or Homer or any of us to come in here and our only message be for the next 20 years, you can live above sin. Mark 16 is supposed to be our message. Because you're living above sin, get out into the highways, to the byways, lay your hands on them. You're Joel's army. You're the ones in the earth that are supposed to bring this about. The gospel is not... You can just, the gospel's not taking a whole bunch of saved people and constantly telling them you can live above sin. You can live, that's not what revival's about. Revival is the kingdom of God come. The kingdom of God in demonstration. The kingdom of God in power and great grace. Hallelujah. When you live it, when you drink it, can't smoke it, but if you could, when it becomes your passion, when it lays you down at night and you dream about it and it wakes you up and you talk about it and you talk about it and you talk to your wife about it and you talk to your, or if you're single, you talk to your neighbor about it, you talk to everybody about it. God is going to do a work in the earth. Get ready. We're on the verge of something. Can I, can I, can I even practice on you now because I believe something's about to happen? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it doesn't come about by his sovereign will. It comes about by we bring it about. Our hunger brings it. Glory. I'm telling you, and I, I say this in Jesus' name, not of boast, by the grace of God. And I even say that by the grace of God. The want to and the fire for revival is stronger in me now than it has ever been. Whatever it takes, God Almighty knows that I'm not saying this to impress you. I'm saying this because I believe that there's a bunch of you that believe this and are going with me. Whatever it takes to receive this, I'm willing to do. To go to that place, because I tell you, I've seen it in my spirit. This is my parable that there is glory in this house and there's glory over these grounds. I, I don't know where we'll go from here. I don't know if we have to, if we have to put a tent out there and hold them in, in the yard. But I'm telling you, the glory, I'm not after, I, I love y'all to pieces. Y'all have helped make our ministry. This is not me. This, I love y'all to pieces. But this is not what we've signed up for. We've signed up to take over a city. We've signed up as Joel's army. We're signed up to bring in thousands and thousands. Hallelujah. Not to be when he comes back, well, we were faithful with our, we were faithful with our 40. Bless God, we were faithful. We taught him righteousness. My God, yes, we did. But Jesus evangelized the whole world with 11 men. And Apostle Paul, born out of due season, come in, and the whole world was transformed. Hallelujah. Psalmist said, when thou saidest, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, O Lord, will I seek. Being hungry for more of God is, as I said, the prerequisite. It's what separates you from anybody else. They're all going to heaven. Good Christians are, you know, Christians are going to heaven. But what will cause a, uh, a revival to take place is being hungry. I'll read this for, to you. You don't have to turn there. Proverbs 18, 1 says this. It says, through, I like this. I got it put in front of me. Through desire, or you could say through a desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermingleth with all wisdom. In other words, once a desire comes in, then there's a separation. You'll sell out to it. After that, selling out to it, you'll seek any kind of wisdom, any kind of source. Now, the word, listen, this is my, this, I love this. Mm. Seen Homer do that. I can do it too. This is, this is, and, and my buddy is going to uh, even, you know, I'm glad he didn't roundhouse me at that Naples, that Na Naples uh, football game. I'm telling you, because he can box, but nevertheless, I'm telling you, he is going to see again. He sees now in Jesus' name, by the grace of God. He'll read this word, not have to listen to it. 
But I'm telling you, I am everything, every, every, everything that I can push in there, everything that I can, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading of our patriarchs that went before us. I'm reading this. I'm reading history that, that men who sought God and they saw, they saw the blind see by the hundreds. I'm telling you, we will have that in our church and in our midst. I love this word. This is, this is my primary source. But then I'm, uh, you know, Gary, Gary says, Bronk, you got to read this book. Well, I'm reading that book. You got to read this book. I'm reading that book. I'm telling you, there is a fire. And it's coming forth from a place that not being solicited by emotion. Now, emotion will, emotion will drain out. Here's the deal. August of this year, it will be 21 years that we've been preaching this and saying, we, if, if, if this was an emotional ride, do you think emotions would have ceased after 21 years? I've got strong emotions then. <laughs> emotions usually don't last more than a, a week or a month or two months. We've been on this kick for 21 years. We will receive our outpouring. 21 years. Glory be to God. Through a desire, a man, when I found her, Two weeks from now on a Sunday, we'll be married 40 years. 40 years. You can't believe that, can you? Because I, we don't even look that old. <laughs> when I found her, I separated. I separated a lot of things. I was like, that is what I want. Then I began to seek and intermingle with all wisdom and all knowledge of how do I get her. I'll call her, I'll court her, I'll do whatever I need to do. I'll spend time with her. Time was the essence then. Bronk? Yes, ma'am. I was just a kid, 16 years old. What are you doing? I'm on the phone with Candy. <laughs> he said, you had to answer to your mama? Yeah, back then, uh, kids answered to their parents. I don't know, you know, it was amazing. <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> I love Miss Gay and, and Marty. They, they have some of the best kids. Uh, and they, uh, thank God for them in the church. And, you know, thank God because, you know, so much is that do, you know, so much that's going on is because of that. You know, thank God that Marty courted Gay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Marty, if you could have had 10 more, man, we'd have, woo, Jesus, that would have been great. Hallelujah. Uh, but uh, back to kids obeying, you know, I, I, it's been it's been 15 years ago because Abby was just a little thing. I don't know. How old is Abby now? 13. 13 so it's, it had to be less than 15. But anyhow, so I, I preached about how parents will do the one, two, three. And we were, kept, we were going outside and Abby was standing out there and somehow she was talking and we were listening. And she, was just, and she says, mommy don't, mommy don't, what is it, baby? Mommy, don't do that. One, two, three. She goes, one, two, three. Oh, forget the counting. And she just goes into it. Oh, forget the counting. <laughs> now, that's, that's, that's parenting. I, mm, yes. I, boom, yes, boom, yes. That's raising them right. Hallelujah. In the, I've seen, oh, God, I don't want to get off that. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Even in a desire for a man to be successful or a woman to be successful, they get single-minded. They start, well, are you coming over tonight and watch? Blow? No, no, I'm spending more time in study. I'm, I'm, I'm going to figure out how to get this thing done. I'm going to be rich one day. No, you're just, you, you know, he se she or he separates themselves through a desire. Come on, hang out with us. What are you doing? Nothing, we're just hanging out. I, I'm going to do that one day, but right now... I, I got some land that I'm going to go purchase. I got some property or I got an investment that I got to, I got to file the papers on and it's just keeping me up and I got to do this. They, they will, success doesn't come without separation. Then once the, success, the separation comes, then you start intermingling yourself with how do I get this done? The knowledge of how to, this is the same way that revival comes. You don't, revival doesn't, you don't just, whoop, what was that? I just fell into God. I just, I really wasn't, I hadn't, I hadn't been to church very much, hadn't been praying very much, and just, God just sovereignly got me. Well, I'm just ticked off at God then. <laughs> Why? Because he's told you and I to pray and fast and seek him 
like we were dying. The man said, what's desire? He said, come over here. I'll show you. Look at that. Look, look down there. He said, I want to have what you got. Well, it's desire you got to have. What is it? Look into that pool of water, to that tub. He reached down, got close enough to the water. The man grabbed him by the back of the neck, stiff-armed him down to where he was fighting for his last breath. And he come up, and he was like ready to fight. He said, my God, what, what were you doing? He said, to the degree that you wanted that last breath, that's the degree you have to go to to get to the place. See, it's free. Somebody said, well, it's free. Haven't you been telling us it's free? Yes, it is. But I'm telling you, the veil of the flesh that has to be broken between the freedom that's there takes a life to where that we want this more than our next breath. Hallelujah. And we will intermingle. We will separate ourselves. We'll say, uh, I want this. I'm going to have this. Glory be to God. Hmm. Our, our vision has to be single. I love that adage. If you want to take away a man's vision, just give him two visions. In other words, and that's why for years people have not understood us. We say, listen, I, my God, Jesus fed the poor. There's no, there's no argument from that. Jesus, you know, I, we want to feed and we want to clothe. And people have come here and said, listen, I've got, a, I've got a vision to feed the poor. Wonderful. I say, you know, that's good. Can I introduce it to the church? No, not really, because I can tell you what's going to happen. You introduce it to them, and we've got people that already can't show up for church. And then you're going to get them involved in your, your program and we already can't get them to do already what we're asking them to do. And then you're just going to divide their time and their energy. And their, no, you can't. Now, if you want to do, do what you're doing, that's okay. But don't expect me. That's not my call right now. My call is to take a group of people as far as they possibly can into the power of God to receive an outpouring. That's our vision. Revival is our vision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God coming in fullness is our vision. Well, somebody said, now, ain't, 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 what, wait a minute. Ain't you supposed to be saying that we are, the number one thing is to be conformed to the image of Christ? Listen, if your desire is, your number one desire is to absolutely be conformed to the image of Christ, then me and you are on the same page. We're on the same page. You're going into revival, aren't you? Well, not really. All I want to do is get intimate with God. you got this revival thing, and I, I just want to know him. Wonderful, because he said this in Matthew. He said, why? Why would you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I command you to do? In other words, you calling, you saying, Lord, you're my Lord. He said, the only way that I can really be your Lord, you want intimacy? Do what I tell you to do. Doing, knowing him and doing what he says to do are one and the same. It's, well, it's grace. No, listen. Knowing Christ and doing Christ and doing his commandments are one and the same. There's no first and then second. They are absolutely, perfectly joined together. In other words, if, you're going, if Jesus tells us in Mark 16, go out there, Receive an outpouring by laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. These are my words to you, and you can't say, I love you, but I do really, I just want to, I want a high priest or high priestess, back room, in the closet, kind of just, I just, I just want to know you, let them have their revival. Jesus says, look, if you want to know me, then do what I tell you to do. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Man, Pastor, what did you eat this morning? I don't know. I don't know. What did you feed me, Candy? Whoo, Jesus. The next 20 years will not be, I promise you this, the next 20 years will not be like these last. Now, I'm not saying these were bad. These were great. But we're about to take off. We are about to take off. Glory be to God. There's people that are watching us. Hey, guys, we are doing everything we can <laughs> to get this over to you because this revival is coming to you as well as unto us. Hallelujah. You're one with us. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. The least, anybody, the least of us in here in the days ahead, if you follow this ministry and follow this call, it will be like a fire that's, that has, it'll be like a brush fire that is sweeping through this region. And anybody that has anything to do with it, if your hands are clean and you step over into it and say, Lord, I didn't, I didn't spend the hours birthing it, but I want it and I will commit to it, it'll jump on you just like everybody else. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're almost done. Hallelujah. Did you have a good time this morning? We, did, we had three different services. Jesus said this. Oh, that was in Matthew 16, it was that quote. But Jesus said this in 13, Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, which when a man has found, he hideth, and for the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Listen. The kingdom of God has come. Yes, you're born in righteousness, peace, joy, the, the, the power of the new nature gives you the accessibility to live above sin. But what he's called us to do is to take that which has been given to us and give it to all men. In the power of now evangelism, the, 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 the conquering of you came through the new nature. But evangelism comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so he's called all of us to take this city. The, 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 the message of the hour has been continue to die. Bring your passions under, your fleshly things under subjection. But he is, he is not going to ever stop telling us that we're free and live above sin. But I'm telling you this, that it is going to transition from a place of where we're at to a place of power, authority, to be exemplified in the world. We've got some testimonies. I can't give them this morning. They can't give them. It's incredible. Terry and Kirsten were sharing with me last week some things that are taking place and the things that they've happened to them at the store, to them at, uh, their, where they live, and people that were uh, Hindus, maybe, yeah. yeah, Hindus and all kinds of different things where the, they, they weren't even trying to witness to them and the people began to just respond like, would you pray for me? And there was no like before the gospel was preached. They just, they just saw them, looked at them and said, there's something. And they couldn't even speak. One person couldn't even speak the American, uh, English real well. They just started signaling for you to pray for them. Please come pray for me. We're on the verge of something wonderful, people. Hallelujah. Let's all stand together. Father, we love you. We thank you for everyone that endured watching through, thank God that Robert had his cell phone on and going. Lord, we thank you that this message is being recorded. It'll be preached throughout the world. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Wherever your gospel is at, whether it's in Germany, Australia, Georgia, Alabama, it doesn't matter, across this land, Colorado, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Oklahoma, Ohio, wherever your kingdom is being preached in truth, this last day, Joel's army outpouring is about to take place, and it's in our hands. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we give you all the praise and glory for your word Let's say this together. I say, I say that in Jesus' name, in Jesus name I, acknowledge I acknowledge that I am part, that I am part of, Joel's of Joel's last day army. Last day army. I, receive I receive the commission that Jesus gave, that Jesus gave to, go to go into all the world and to preach this gospel. And to preach this, gospel. This, gospel this gospel is a gospel of power. It's a gospel of sound mind. It's a gospel of love. I say, I am willing 
and obedient. And, obedient. and I will bring forth, will bring forth. With, my and with my brothers and sisters a great harvest, great harvest. in these last days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you. Be blessed. We'll see you Wednesday night.